ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه او بريز دو تو الله وي بريز هيم وي سيك هيز فورجيفنس اند وي اسك هيز اسيستنس ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا and we seek refuge with Allah from the evil within our souls and the consequences of our bad deeds man yahdihi Allah fala mudilla lah wa man yudlil fala hadiya lah whosoever Allah guides no one can lead astray and whosoever Allah allows to go astray because they do not want any guidance that no one can guide wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh and I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah alone with no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. May Allah exalt his mention and grant him peace. أَمَّا بَعْدْ فَأَنَّا أَصْدَكَ الْحَدِيثِ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ وَخَيْرَ الْهَدِّي هَدْيُ مُحَمَّدٍ صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار. As to what follows, verily the most truthful speech is the book of Allah, the Quran, and the best way of life and guidance is that of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the worst of affairs are the ones that we introduce into this deen of ours, because every newly introduced matter is an innovation, and every innovation will lead astray, and whatever is astray will be going to the hellfire. In the last lecture, a uh, hole of a lizard or the hole of a lizard uh, we had mentioned that the Muslims wind up imitating the disbelievers in four broad dimensions creed we gave some examples of that worship we gave some examples of that behavior we gave some examples of that and celebration and we didn't elaborate much because the matter of celebrations is a broad topic of its own so I saw fit, I saw it fit to dedicate a special lecture dealing with celebrations uh, that are, you know, whether cre created by the Muslims or adopted by the Muslims from the non-Muslims. And um, basically, the saddest thing about this conflict, as we speak, is that many Muslims have fallen victims to this concept of involving themselves or engaging in celebrating some sort of Eid some sort of Eid we don't know how it came about we may know I will mention some but somehow it is something that is very common so much so that if you a person who adheres to the Quran and the Sunnah you, you stick to that during the times of celebrations you become considered among the people to be an extremist a fundamentalist and a terrorist, right? They must add the terrorist and everything there's a terrorist now somewhere along the lines when speaking about the Muslims, right? Uh, and so why? Why is that? And how come this happened? You know what? The truth of the matter is the main reason the main reason why so many Muslims have fallen victims to, this, to these celebrations is because of the misunderstanding of a very fundamental concept of Islam. You know what it is? Who would like to guess? What is that fundamental concept? I spoke about it, you know, tremendously in the last lecture. Actually, the last lecture was really based on that conception. Okay, if you're too tired, I'll guess on your behalf. Or well, I don't have to guess, I know the answer. We are leaders, not followers. We are leaders, we are not followers. Not, as in negating. Not only that, it's even more than that. We are not only leaders who don't allow our followers or the people in Islam to follow others, we don't even allow others to imitate us. That was back then. At the time of the Sahaba, at the time of the Khilafah of Umar radiallahu anhu, and afterwards when Muslims were ruling the countries, you must believe this. You must believe this. Read the history. Non-Muslims were not allowed to imitate Muslims because they used to. They try to put on a turban, imama. They told them, chop it in half. No imama for you. 
Women try to dress like Muslim women, regular women try to dress like Muslim women, they said, you better change your dress code. This is not for you. Anything that they did, which was particular to the Muslims, the non-Muslims were prohibited, who were living under the Islamic rulership, from imitating the Muslims. Let alone doing it the other way around. Not only we are leaders who don't follow anyone, we don't even allow others to imitate us. Because Allah had given us a distinct uh, religion uh, in terms of the law. Of course, the aqidah of Tawheed is, is, is uh, among all prophets and messengers, is consistent. However, things pertaining to appearance, dress code, way of life, what you find in Islam, you find it in opposition to what you find in previous scriptures and previous laws. Why? Because of this fundamental principle. And this is what I want every youth and those who are older, don't worry, you're included, to understand, not only from this lecture, to understand as a general principle, we are leaders, not followers. We don't follow anyone. And when do you celebrate someone else's celebration or festival? When you're following them. Otherwise, you wouldn't. You will be sufficed with what you have. And the narrations will further explain that. Bye. Now, I wonder, Wallahi, I wonder whether we read the Qur'an. And if we do read the Qur'an, I wonder whether we understand the Qur'an. And if we do understand the Qur'an, I wonder whether we believe what Allah says in the Qur'an. Do we really believe? Or do we think something else? Well, maybe Allah means this, maybe He doesn't. You know that, that conception, that concept constitutes kufr, disbelief. It will take you way out of Islam, like a rocket. See you later. Ma fi Islam for you. No Islam for you. If you think Allah did not mean something in the Quran, even a letter, even a letter, even an alif lam mean, we don't doubt. Do we believe? What Allah said in the Quran. And if we believe, do we act? Do we implement? These are a series of questions that we need to really uh, think about. I mean, all of us have been reading the Quran, Allah knows for how many years. And many of us can see in ourselves uh, lack of change. It's like nothing happens, right? Yeah, I read and I know. Yes, I've heard. But, and, brother, you know, where are we going? Well, you know, I don't know. Ramadan, after Ramadan, and a month after a month, we read the Qur'an, we hear the Sunnah, but some just simply don't move forward. They don't move forward. It could be because we really don't believe, but I doubt that. We must believe in the Qur'an. We are missing the application. Just like the Sahaba. The Sahaba. رضي الله عنهم وأرضاهم أجمعين. Unbelievable, unbelievable group of people. This is why they were the Sahaba. But you know what? Allah had allowed us and given us means to follow their ways. When we speak of them and we praise them, we don't mean that they are something that we don't strive to be. It doesn't mean that, okay, you know, you're never going to be like the Sahaba, so you're okay the way you are. No, 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 no. When we speak of them, that means we strive to be like them. Now can you imagine how they would react when an ayah like this was recited upon them? اتبعوا ما أنزل إليكم من ربكم ولا تتبعوا من دونه أولياء قليلا ما تذكرون Follow that which has been sent down to you from your Lord. From your Rabb, your master, the one who knows what's good for you. And do not follow allies beside him. Little do you remember. Unbelievable. Allah speaking to us. You know the followers of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Follow what has been sent down to you from your Lord. And do not follow other allies. Don't follow other people, other religions, other leaders, other tawaghit. Other objects of worship. Little do you remember. Because we don't. You will find 
many of the Muslims, unfortunately, unfortunately we ask Allah to, to bring us all back to the path of guidance. We wish goodness for everyone. But many are imitating the disbelievers in every aspect of life. And it, it, it's no longer confined to, to the worldly material you know, matters. It became involved in the very essence of our religion. So much so that Tawheed is foreign among some Muslims. If we can still give them ti- the title of Muslims. Tawheed is foreign. Shirk is, is integrated with every act of worship. Sacrifice, dua, salah, even tawaf. They became for others than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because when we hear this ayah, it's like we don't really understand. Anyways, here's another ayah for you, and you can imagine how the Sahaba reacted. وَأَنَّ هَذَا صِرَاطِ مُسْتَقِيمًا فَاتَّبِعُوهُ وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا السُّبُلْ فَتَفَرَّقَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ ذَلِكُمْ وَصَّاكُمْ بِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ And you know the hadith of Abu Mas'ud رضي الله عنه which explains this hadith. That the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he drew a line with a stick on the ground for the Sahaba and he said this is the path of Allah. Then he drew lines on the right and on the left different paths on the right and the left of this line he said these these are other paths on the top or on the head of each one is the shaitan calling you to him then he recited this ayah and that Allah said and this is my straight path so follow it and do not follow other paths otherwise it will separate you from the path of Allah Azza wa Jal that he has admonished you with perhaps you will become among people who have taqwa people who will protect themselves from being misguided from the day of judgment from Allah's anger and from entering Jahannam taqwa accommodates all of these meanings because it's protection and we need protection from Allah's anger from Allah's hellfire and from Allah's wrath and anything which will separate us or will veil us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here's another one for you Allah then spoke to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam directly ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَاكَ عَلَى شَرِيعَةٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْرِ فَاتَّبِعْهَا وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ أَهْوَاءَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Then we have put you on a plain way on a clear path of our commandment then follow it Allah speaking to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then follow it and do not follow the desires, the whims, the inclinations of those who don't know. Meaning Allah called them ignorant. Those juhal, those ignorant among the creation, don't follow their ways. Allah has given you a particular command, a particular sharia, a law, follow that. And don't follow the ways of others. Then it goes on to the extent that Allah warns the Prophet wasallam. The affair is so serious that Allah Azza wa Jal warns the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the one who is most keen on keeping straight on the path and never going astray. Still Allah told him, وَلَئِنِ اتَّبَعْتَ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ بَعْدَ الَّذِي بَعْدَ مَا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ مَا لَكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا لَكَ مِنْ مَا لَكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ وَلِيٍّ وَلَا وَاقٍ And if you follow their desires, their inclinations, after the knowledge has come to you, then really you shall have against Allah no ally or protector. This is to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah is telling him, if you, if you leave alone the knowledge which you have, and we are included in this by the way, when Allah addresses the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is from the fundamentals of the deen, we are automatically included unless there is an indication that this is specific to him. When Allah addresses him particularly concerning a matter, and the context will clarify, and so will the tafsir of the ulama. But if there isn't such an indication, we are included. We are being warned. Don't leave alone the knowledge and follow the ways and the desires of people who don't know. If you do so, no one will be able to protect you from Allah. You say, brother, but everyone in the world is doing it. Everyone does it, ya akhi. It's only you. You and a bunch of other Wahhabis making life difficult for us. We were having a good time until we started coming to these lectures. I was listening to music, watching television, celebrating birthdays, everything was good. I started attending these lectures, my life now is all, you know, constricted. Subhanallah. 
If you feel this way, I apologize. But this is a bad indication. Because Allah said in the Quran, فَمَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَهْدِيَهُ يَشْرَحْ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ If Allah wants to guide you, He will open your chest for Islam. Meaning you will submit to Allah. Anything that comes from Allah, from Allah you love it. You love it. Not only that you, you're doing it because you're forced to, you love it. Yes, there's this element of struggle. This is a natural thing. But in the depth of your heart, because it is from Allah, you can't help but love it. So you'll be happy that you're being further, you know, guided concerning the matters of the deen as opposed to feeling otherwise. And I hope that I was just assuming that no one feels this way. So then what do we say about someone who says, but everyone else in the world does it? We say everything you have, every complaint you have has been addressed by Allah Azza wa Jal Himself in the Quran. وَإِن تُطِعْ أَكْثَرَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ يُضِلُّكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Unbelievable ayah. Unbelievable ayah. If you follow most of the people upon earth, they will mislead you from the path of Allah. Allah is already telling us. Numbers don't make a difference. In business world, they say quantity and quality. You could have a hundred bad chairs and as soon as the people come, they break. Or you have one chair that can fit all of you on top of each other. Which one is better? A single chair. Even if your brothers are on top of each other. Though this is hypothetically speaking, alhamdulillah, everyone has a nice comfortable chair. But one chair that is fixed and firm is superior to a hundred chairs that will not last five minutes. So you say many people do it. Say many people are going to Jahannam. That's what Allah, that's what we know. In the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu hadith, sahih. That from every 1,999 will go to Jahannam. One will go to Jannah. This is in the beginning of the matter. Of course, eventually, all Muslims will go to Jannah. But initially, from every 1,999. So what do you think you and I have to do to be that one person? A lot, right? We have to exert some extra effort. So we will be that one person out of a thousand. If you're going to say, well, well, brother, everybody else is doing it, say everybody else is the 999, and they may go to Jahannam. You want to go? So it's a very basic understanding, if we have the right intellect. طيب. Now, you see, I, I had a, a, a debate with myself for the longest time. Do I address each holiday on its own, and give you the history of it? You know, where it came from and how and why. And even though that was entertained for some time, I realized that A, it's a waste of time. B, I don't want to memorize all this stuff, nor do I want to read it from a paper. You know, how this, how this festival came into place. And also the, the historians differ about the origin of most of them. I mean, if you go back to Valentine's, you find, you know, uh, 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 maybe 50 different interpretations of how Valentine's came into existence. So, I'm, I will not be giving you anything solid. So, I, I decided not to do so. Malice, if that, if that child can just chill out for a second. I decided to give you a fundamental, foundational grounds on which you can deal with all of the holidays. And the benefit of that is... If you're a true Muslim that really loves the deen of Islam, this will be sufficient for you. I don't have to prove to you where the Valentine's or Christmas came from for you to abandon it. Because we will establish that we have two holidays, period. And we don't care the other ones where they came from, how they came, what their condition is, we don't care. And we don't want it. Secondly, just in case they innovate and they continue to innovate new religions no one will come and say well brother you never spoke about monkey's day because now we have monkey's day and you know Darwin felt that we were very much like monkeys and so decided to have a monkey's day you spoke about Christmas Valentine you never spoke about monkey's day come on brothers let's go celebrate monkey's day why? well no one said it's haram so I was, you know, worried that they will come up with different holidays in the future and you, you, you'll be shocked. Imagine if after some hundred years they come up with monkey's days and they go back to this lecture and they say, wow, this guy knew the future. I say, I don't know the future, man. Only Allah knows the future. I'm just guessing. But human beings do funky stuff. And one of them is maybe a monkey's day or some other animal. I don't know. Point being, 
I want to give us all some, something which will not make us refer to the background of that festival. Once it's un-Islamic, khali wali brother. We don't need it in our lives. How is that? I think that's better. And that way I will not keep you till midnight. Because if you read some of these, you know, histories of these, uh, these festivals, it's something ridiculous. Ridiculous. And it's a waste of time. Tab Jamil. But uh, let's enter into this uh, foundational principle through an ayah in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal in the uh, Surah Al-Furqan. One of the most beautiful chapters in the book. Or let me go back. It's not a chapter. One of the most beautiful surahs in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. Now I have a reservation about using the term chapter. That's one of the discussion. Uh, where Allah Azza wa Jal at the end of the surah describes, who knows, who does he describe at the end of Surah Al-Furqan? Ibadur Rahman. Come on, brothers. Aywa. Allah describes the qualities of Ibadur Rahman. Ibadur Rahman is the one who is on the earth, and when they are the ones who are on the earth, they say, until the end of the surah, is the qualities of Ibadur Rahman. Now, one of the fundamental qualities of Ibadur Rahman, which I ask Allah Azza wa Jalla to make me and you among them, is ولا يشهدون الزور they do not witness falsehood this ayah if you want to discuss it in detail maybe books can be written just that what these few words ولا يشهدون الزور and they do not witness falsehood that includes thousands of things If there's music, they can't stick around, they have to leave. If there's backbiting, they can't stick around, they have to leave. If people are mocking the deen of Allah, they can't stick around, they have to leave. And the list goes on. But one of the implications of this ayah, per the tafsir of Mujahid and among other among the Mufassirin from the Tabi'een, is Zur are the festivals of the Kuffar. And those Muslims, they don't witness these festivals of the Kuffar. They got nothing to do with them. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala said, The festivals of the Mushrikeen combine confusion, physical desires and falsehood. There is nothing in them of any religious benefit. Uh, witnessing here, yashhadun means attending. They don't attend them in any way, shape or form. So Allah Azza wa Jal praised them. Praise the believers who don't witness any falsehood. Included in the list, the celebrations and the festivals of the non-Muslims. Regardless of what kind of non-Muslim it is. Now this particular ayah is reinforced by the actions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the hadith of Anas radiallahu anhu arda, he said, قدم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم المدينة ولها يومان يلعبون فيهما فقال ما هذان اليومان قالوا كنا نلعب فيهما في الجاهلية فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن الله قد أبدلكم بهما خيرا منهما يوم الأضحى ويوم الفطر The messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم went to Medina when he came to Medina He found that the people were celebrating two particular days. There were two days that they were celebrating. He said to them, what are these two days? They said, these are two days which we used to celebrate, entertain ourselves in during the days of jahiliyyah, ignorance. Thereupon the Prophet ﷺ said, Verily, Allah has replaced you. Uh, Please make that child... Uh, if he's still making noise, if he can just go outside for a few seconds, because I'm losing my uh, chain of uh, thoughts. Barakallah feekum. Verily, Allah has replaced you. Now pay attention to the word. Abdalakum has replaced you with two days better than these days that you were celebrating. The day of Adha, which is the Eid of uh, Eid al, at the end of Hajj. Wa Yawm al-Fitr, the day of Fitr, which is the day of breaking the fast. Yani Eid al-Adha wa Eid al-Fitr. Now, listen to what the ulama have deduced from this particular statement of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. First and foremost, he did not approve. And we know that an aspect of the sunnah is a sunnah taqririya. 
approved sunnah where the Prophet ﷺ will see something happening in his presence and he does not say anything about it. He doesn't stop it. That means it's a sunnah because he approved it sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we have hundreds of examples. Here, he asked about the origin, the origin of this particular celebration. When it was said to him, it was from Jahiliyyah, A, he did not acknowledge it. He wanted them to stop it by telling them, Allah has replaced you. Now, let's speak in common terms. The term replacement, what does it entail? It entails leaving the former and accepting the latter. When you replace a teacher with another, meaning the other one has gone and another one has taken its place. Now, so there's no simultaneous, uh, you know, uh, things going on here. One is replacing the other. Allah has replaced you with two days better than these innovative days from Jahiliyyah. And He only, sallallahu alayhi wa accepted two, Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. Furthermore, if you remember the lecture about music, when Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu entered and they were the, the two girls were beating the deaf and you know whatever. What did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? Inna li kulli qawmin eidan wa hadha eiduna. Verily, for every people there's an exclusive holiday, uh, festival, celebration and this is ours. Now, look at the beauty here, of course this is from the, from the statements of the ulama, not my own uh, deduction. Lam, the lamb here, likulli, indicates exclusivity. Meaning this is only for them, it is not for us. Let's, let's get some examples from the Quran. وَلِكُلِّ وَجْهَةٌ هُوَ مُوَلِّيهَا For each religion, there is a place where they will face in their, in their prayer. The, each one, are, now do the Muslims, the Jews and Christians, do they all face the Kaaba? No. The same way each one has a way, has a way, a direction which they face in the Salah, then we have a Eid that is different than theirs. Allah says again, لِكُلِّنْ جَعَلْنَا مِنْكُمْ شِرْعَةً وَمِنْ Again, لِكُلِّنْ For each of these religions we made a law and a way, and a special way for them. The way of Islam is unlike the way of the previous religions. So the Lamb then indicates exclusivity. This is for you, this is for us. قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ لَا أَعْبُدُ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ وَلَا أَنْتُمْ عَابِدُونَ مَا عَبُدُ Until the end, لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَلِيَ دِينَ We are on two separate ends. We are on this side of the coin, on top, and you are at the bottom. And you will stay at the bottom. Squashed and smashed and if we become silly and want to go down with them and be smashed alongside with them this is amazing amazingly wrong we should feel honored by Allah Azza wa Jal that we have been placed on top so then we have our holidays and they have their holidays this means any festival of any kind related to the non-Muslims is haram in Islam. And we want to focus on the term Eid. Does anyone know what Eid means in Arabic? Now of course it's translated into celebration. But the root Ya'ud Aad al-Rajul min al-Safar Auda even here Khuruj Auda right or wrong? Nobody goes on vacation anymore? MashaAllah if you have an iqama, I'm assuming you do. If you don't have an iqama, ma'alish, no one will report you. But anyways, you have khuruj, awda. Awda is what has to do with coming back. And Eid is called Eid because it comes back every year. It's something that is done yearly or annually. So this is where the concept came from. We don't have Eid. Anything that happens on annually is non-Islamic. Un-Islamic. Whether it is uh, anniversaries, you know, somebody wants to be romantic with his wife, so they try, you know, the, spe- the day which they got married. Once you're doing a Eid, because every year it comes around, it becomes a no-no. And the wife, quite frankly, deserves a treatment befitting Islamically, not only on one day of the year. Every day of the year. The same with the mother and the father and the list goes on. And I will elaborate somewhat on these. But I wanted you to understand this concept properly. So 
there will be no doubt Now we don't care what kind of religion, what kind of celebration, festival they will come up, come up with In the future, the Prophet wasallam established that you have a way and we have a way You want more? I will give you more Listen to this hadith which you probably never heard in your life Probably But most of this lecture is based on the book of Shaykh Al-Sabi Ibn Taymi Rahimahullah Iqtida' Sirat Al-Mustaqim Fi Mukhalafat Ashab Al-Jaheem You know, uh, uh, taken or, or, or traveling upon a straight path In order to be in opposition with the people of the Hellfire And the, he, the whole book deals with how the Muslims should not imitate the Kuffar in the various aspects of life Now listen to this hadith, amazing hadith The hadith of Thabit Ibn Al-Dahak He said A man vowed Nether to sacrifice some camels in a place called Al Bawana. Al Bawana. So he went to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he told them, I have vowed to sacrifice some camels in Al Bawana. Now, what is the usual Islamic principle? Is that when you have a nether, you fulfill it. Right? If you vow, you keep your vow. Unless there's something wrong. Which prevents you from fulfilling the vow, such as a prohibited vow. Like if you swear that you will not, you know, uh, if you tell someone, tells his wife, that you are to me like my mother, for example. This is haram. This is haram. Uh, that kind of thing, you have to, you know, you have to break that nether and do the kafara, and that's all another discussion. But if there's no such thing, you must fulfill the vow if it is halal. Now, the Prophet ﷺ didn't tell him, Tadal, go ahead. He asked him two questions. He said to him, were there any idols that used to be worshipped in that place at the time of Jahiliyyah? Did they used to worship any idols? So you tried to sacrifice the animal there. Was that place virtuous in the sight of the kuffar before? If so, then no. The man told him no. Then he asked him a second question. Did they hold any of their festivals over there? He told him no. He said, then fulfill your vow. So the Prophet ﷺ paid attention to the origin. If this particular location was associated with the kuffar worshipping idols or with the kuffar celebrating some festivals and you want to sacrifice the animals there with this place being held in honor by them, then no. But since this is not the case, go ahead. This is a, a, a firm foundation that should terminate any possible potential doubts that the shaitan will whisper because in our fitrah we shouldn't have any doubts but the shaitan may whisper to someone that maybe there's an exception there is no exception so let us break it down man Valentine's Day and what do you know about Valentine's Day? the most favorite day for any flower shop and in, believe me in foreign countries if there was no Valentine's there would be no flower shops the only ones that will remain in business are the ones that are installed in hospitals, right? Because people will continue to give flowers to the people who are sick. But if they were out on the street, there would be no flower shop a long time ago. How often do people buy flowers? Come on now. You find it on the ground, you pick it up, it's free. I mean if it's in your area, you can't get it from the neighbor. That's haram. But the point being, believe it or not, go to the business world and see how flower shop make businesses. They wait the whole year for Valentine's. Of course Christmas and other things as well. But mainly Valentine's because this is where all of their money comes in. And what is Valentine's? I mean the, the origin, again, the issue of origin is, is sophisticated. But let us least to say it is Roman adopted by the Christians. And either way it is haram. And where does it come from? What is it really? Believe it or not, nowadays, you know, some couples, married couples, you know, they try to be, you know, funny and they, they, they celebrate Valentine's. But who is it mainly for? Boyfriend, girlfriend. That's what it's for. Men and women, actually some of these wild teenagers, if it's, you know, what is it, February the 14th? If it's February the 13th and they don't have someone, they just hook up with anyone. So the next day they will have a boyfriend or a girlfriend. It's like, I don't like them, but you know, maybe somebody will give me some flowers. So it's, what is this? Nonsense, you know? But this is the reality. This holiday is among the most wicked of all. A'udhu Billah. All you see is images of, uh, you, know, uh, you know, hearts, you know, love and, you know, the Cupid and whatever, the arrow going from one side and going out from the other side and, 
all this nonsense man and what it is people trying to be loved that's it's it's a it's an inferiority complex it is like a, a mental disease people love attention and love so they just want to get some love and attention on any particular day but a muslim doesn't need that what kind of love are you looking for the love of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if allah loves you who cares about everybody else that's what we should really aim for now if the people love us because allah loves us alhamdulillah but we try to have people love us even though allah doesn't love us this is no good love so i'm not going to give you the, the history of valentine let's just say it sucks and from now on woe to you from writing a card or receiving a card or even putting a silly picture on facebook supporting or 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 acknowledging this holiday in any way shape or form it's a holiday where people commit zina where people wind up disobeying allah where where people who are not married engage in things that only married people engage in all these are unacceptable islamic abhorrent sins abhorrent sins zina is so so uh, grave in the sight of allah azza wa jal i was just reading a fatwa today it's an amazing fatwa i never knew this before this fatwa says that you know if somebody put a gun to you and said say kufr are you allowed to say kufr you're allowed you're allowed to do to say a statement of kufr to protect your soul but the ulama say the majority of the ulama say if someone put a gun to your head and force you to commit zina it is not allowed you're supposed to get killed this is how grave it is and the fatwa came that some muslims may allah may allah uh, relieve uh, and, and elevate their suffering some muslims by the kuffar to gun point they tell the person to go with his you know relative mother sister and he said what are we do, what are we to do in this case he said you get killed if it was a strange woman you're not even allowed to approach let alone your own mother or sister but if it was a statement of kufr say the statement of kufr and you don't get yourself killed but if it's zina no because it deals with with harming the other individual and they have a a fit of position amazing that's how grave sin is and to people on valentines this is like drinking you know some milkshake no problem big it's actually expected so how can we get involved in something that is so heinous so abhorrent in the sight of allah where so many people around the world disobey allah in this fashion a'udhu billah if you love allah and islam you will never be able to and when you see people getting involved in it you will become sick in your stomach and you will say something about it next mother's day you know mother's day and you know we've we've mentioned many times that you know that if you really want to go to jannah you better be good with your mother if anyone here thinks he can speak to his mother in a manner that is un-islamic by screaming at her or 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 you know uh, blowing in her you know and, and and you know blowing some some things or expressions that are unacceptable or i don't know anything anything that will hurt her feelings let him guarantee himself a ticket in jahannam unless allah wills otherwise but allah, the greatest sin after shirk is uquq alwalidain being undutiful and disobedient to one's parents be very careful and the father is included but the mother has a special place so a muslim does not does not abandon his mom all year and he remembers her on mother's day and the or, the origin of mother's day is a god goddess i'm sorry named iris egyptian goddess named oh, not iris isis this is where it came from and then of course it was adopted by the romans and the list goes on until the christians picked it up and then it became a popular holiday mother's day and i've pre- previously told you the reality of mother's day a person will disobey will disrespect and ignore his mother all year round then as they say in street language he will shut her up with a present on mother's day that's what it is get off me but take these flowers and i love you quote unquote see you later mom and all year round they may not even speak to their mothers can a muslim do this no 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 you don't wait for mother's day and if you wait for mother's day then you are doing something that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam didn't do nor did his companions nor anyone who we knew to be righteous they never waited for something called mother's day to love their mothers they love their mothers all year round 
and Father's Day is something similar. No need to elaborate. Christmas, <coughs> New Year, strictly Christian. And Christmas has a long history as well. Let's begin by saying Jesus, the son of Mary, may Allah exalt his mention, was not born on the 25th of December. Because we cannot prove it. Not Islamically, not Biblically, not historically. There's absolutely no authentic reference to that. Rather, if you want to go historically, you will find that this is some, you know, Constantine and Julius Caesar and some god, sun god that they used to worship uh, during the pagan times, eventually adopted by the Catholic Church in order to bring the pagans into Christianity. And it's a long history that I will not waste your time with. The bottom line is, Christmas is a wicked day where shaitan is being worshipped and loved. In the name of the so-called Son of God, which they have made equal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I will deal with the issue of, of greetings and how do we deal with that. Christmas and New, Year, New Year's are Christian festivals and my brothers and sisters in Islam, we have nothing to do with them. Even if someone said Merry Christmas to you, you don't say Merry Christmas back to them. And I will give you the adequate explanation as we move on in the lecture. But until then, keep it in your mind. That you will never ever get involved in Christmas or New Year's. And New Year's, be careful because some people consider it to be something ordinary. This is the Gregorian calendar, not the Islamic calendar, not the Hijri calendar. This is their, their New Year, not ours. And we don't even have a New Year's really. We just have life goes on until you meet Allah. Yes, they had to establish a time, which is time of and this, the, the Sahaba, you know, they, they differed on when to begin the Hijrah, the, the, the lunar calendar, and they wind up choosing the time of Hijrah of the Prophet ﷺ. It wasn't something that, you know, was from the time of the Prophet ﷺ for us to have a New Year's also in Islam. And this is where many Muslims have fallen, fallen into error, where they try to do what the Christians do on their New Year's, on our New Year's. So people start, you know, uh, giving greetings to one another. This should be avoided as well. Birthdays. Huh? When was the last time you blew some candles on your birthday cake? And you know what they believe if you don't blow all the candles? Oh, no, no, it's no good. If, for, I remember from my days of Jahiliyyah. If you blew the candles and not all of them were out, that's bad luck for you. And, what, and how do they try to, so look at these silly people. How do they try to run away from the bad luck? They light them back again. So you try again. Okay now, okay now everything is going to be fine. It's like the first time, you know, don't worry about it. So he keeps, you know, blowing and blowing and blowing until finally once he gets them all, khalas, no bad luck for you. He said, what is this nonsense, man? Anyways, so the candles, by the way, also have a very odd origin. Dealing with some stars that were worshipped besides Allah, and that these stars resembled, and the candles had some sort of st relationship or symbol, sim uh, they symbolized stars in the sky. Furthermore, the idea of having a birthday cake and all that is again something that was uh, carried by the Christians, propagated by them. We fall back into the same issue. And most importantly, and the point that I want to focus on is that people say, Brother, when I celebrate my birthday, I am not trying to imitate the kuffar because there is no religious you know, aspect to this uh, celebration. It's something that is worldly. I am only trying to praise Allah. I want to thank Allah. He gave me another life full of health, full of wealth, full of everything. I want to show thankfulness to Allah. Is there anything wrong with that? Now it sounds like a strong argument, yeah? Wait! Wait! Here comes the rocket. Now, as a Muslim, let's say someone told you, Brother, I have come up with a new way to praise Allah. If you do 10 push-ups and 20 sit-ups and you run around the park 15 times, this is one of the best ways to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do you say? Sounds good? Can you praise Allah in this fashion? 
Why? Is praising Allah an act of worship? Yes or no? What's the first thing you say in the Fatiha? After the Ta'awud and Basmalah? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen You praise Allah So praising Allah is an act of worship And if you want to praise Allah and thank Him by celebrating a birthday and having a cake and inviting people to give you gifts, then you are trying to worship Allah in a way which He did not legislate. You have fallen into the same trap. This is not a worldly anymore because you have admitted that you're trying to show thankfulness to Allah and showing thankfulness to Allah has to be according to the deen of Allah, not according to you and I. Because some people will tell you dance, to show thankfulness to Allah and others will tell you exercise and some will say go speeding in your car you will never, you will never reach an end everyone has his own way and what's the, what's the difference between those and birthday? nothing all of them are claiming that we're trying to thank Allah in this fashion we say this fashion is not from the way of the Prophet Muhammad if Allah was pleased with us being thankful to him every year then the Prophet would have been the first to celebrate his birthday because he is the most precious soul Alayhi salatu salam. Guess what? He did it. So is one of us more important than him? That he would avoid it and we will do it? No. So anyone who tries to bring this shubuha, this misconception about birthdays, you know the answer for it already. No, my friend. This is not how you show thankfulness to Allah. If you become older, you better worry some more. You better worry some more. That you are approaching your death. Be thankful to Allah all year round. But don't specify a day. And I told you before, and I will say it again, why, what, is the prime, what is the prime reason, the main reason, why people celebrate birthdays? Who remembers from before? Gifts. Give me a present. If you present, give me a present, otherwise please be absent. Playing with the words. If you're present, give me a present, otherwise be absent. I don't want to see your face. You're just coming to consume my cake. You know I paid 60 riyals to get this cake from Danu. You will just come and eat it for free and bring nothing with you? What a horrible friend you are. Out, out. What? Yeah, that's what it is. Try to go. Don't try to go. But if you've ever been there before, now you can't go anymore. But trust me, I know this for a fact. If someone had a birthday party and everyone came with no gifts, this person would have the worst birthday in his life. <laughs> He'd be like, no way. I used to be, when I was a youngster, before Allah guided, you know, the people around me, we had, you know, the birthday, our, my birthday wasn't, a spe- wasn't, wasn't the ordinary birthday. It must be videotaped with a whole musical band. We would have a musical band in the house and a whole big deal. And, and if someone got me, if someone didn't get the gift I was waiting for, even though I have 50 gifts, but I wanted a bicycle and there was no bicycle, I would cry for the rest of the day. What is this birthday party here? Where's my bike? That's, that's the mentality. I want something. And birthdays are really for people who love gifts. You know, they can't afford it on their own. So they say, khalas inshallah, you know, they make a wish list and they put it on Facebook, you know, they make hints. Oh, I went by the, you know, the mall yesterday, I saw these wonderful, you know, uh, shoes. So hint, you know, just a week before the birthday. So the people go like, oh, oh, wow, you got it? Come on, man. When you put it on Facebook, I knew you wanted me to get it. So people try to play games. And we don't play games in Islam. We keep it real. You know, just, you know, leave with all that alone. Buy it. Here comes the hot stuff. Mawlid. You know Mawlid? Mawlid the Nabawi. The birthday of the Prophet You know who were the losers who started this? The Shia. One of our worst enemies. Disguised in an Islamic dress code. Disguised in an Islamic outfit. Some of them are Muslims, wicked, deviant, misguided, and have all the evil qualities, yes. But many of them are non-Muslims, speaking on our behalf. The Fatimites, Al-Fatimiyun, in particular, began this when, in the 4th century, means 
the Asalaf al-Salih, the righteous predecessors which the Prophet ﷺ spoke about, خَيْرُ النَّاسِ قَرْنِي ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُونَهُمْ have ended already. The best of people are my generation and those who follow them and those who follow them. They were already done. The Sahaba, the Tabi'een, Atba'u Tabi'een, the Ulama, never engaged in this. After that virtuous time, there came the Shia, the Fatimites, with the celebration of Mawlid, and it, it didn't, it wasn't very popular. It became popular in the 6th century by a king named Al Mudaffar Kawkaburi. And the, at the end of the 6th century, beginning of the 7th century, that's six, 700 years after the Prophet ﷺ returned to Allah. And who, who entertained it? The ignorant. On the top of the list, the Sufis, who were already obsessed with the Christian way of life, with the Christian monasticism, the Christian asceticism living on their own and you know living the life of seclusion and the life of of carelessness and so on and so forth supposedly they were fascinated with that and then they reached a point where they loved it entertained it and then everything the Christians came up with they were on their path so then the Mawlid became popular and what happens in this Mawlid continues to amaze me you know, many people claim that they love the Prophet ﷺ by celebrating this particular Mawlid. And we will address that among the misconceptions that they have there. <coughs> However, one must say, one must say, do you think the Prophet ﷺ conveyed to us everything that we needed to get closer to Allah? You must say yes. Was that included no. So then what do we say? It's as basic and simple as that. It's that simple. These celebrations supposedly began with something lawful and acceptable, but they quickly, quickly grew into something that is totally un-Islamic. I've seen it with my own eyes. A female singer, half dressed, which means the other half is naked, singing on stage with a bunch of men in the audience during the Mawlid. And suddenly, suddenly, everyone gets up. Why do they get up? The Messenger of Allah Wasallam supposedly just paid them a visit. So they stand in honor to him. Even though the Sahaba, they said, we would never stand when the Messenger of Allah Wasallam would come because we knew how much he hated that. So even the idea of standing was Islamically unacceptable. These people not only claim that he's, he's alive with them in that celebration, but they also do something which is against the Sunnah. Then don't ask about the Burda, Qasidatul Burda. It's a poem where the Prophet ﷺ is given the attributes of Allah and more. Among your knowledge, among the things which you know, is al lawh wal qalam the preserved tablet and the pen. You know the preserved tablet? That which Allah had decreed 50,000 years before the creation of the heavens and earth, that which none but Allah knows, they say this is part of the knowledge of the Prophet ﷺ. It's not the whole thing, this is only part of it. This is the Mawlid. An innovative celebration, practiced by those who usually are the weakest in adhering to the Sunnah unfortunately. Now we know some people have good intentions, but good intentions, my brothers and sisters, are not sufficient in Islam. Having a good, good intention that is not supported with the Sunnah is of no value. Now let us answer some of their misconceptions. Before that, let us know that the Prophet ﷺ said, Do not extol me, do not exaggerate about me like the Christians extolled and exaggerated about the son of Mary. I am only the slave of Allah. So say the slave of Allah and his messenger. إنما أنا عبد الله ورسوله فقولوا عبد الله ورسوله I am only the slave of Allah the slave of Allah and his messenger so call me the slave of Allah and his messenger don't do to me what the Christians did to Jesus what did the Christians do to Jesus? they celebrate his birthday on the 25th of December they say we are venerating him 
We say venerating him is by obeying him and following his sunnah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you really love him, then you will do what he did. You will not do something which he didn't do, he never told you to do. They say, everyone does it. We say, if you follow the majority of people on earth, they will mislead you from the path of Allah that doesn't hold any water. They say, it's a good innovation. We say, this is amazing. This is amazing. Good? Listen now, just think basic words. Basic English terminology. Good innovation. Imagine if I give you a lecture about good shirk. There's good shirk, brother. Good kufr and bad kufr and bad shirk. You know, you leave alone the bad kufr, bad shirk, but ma fi mushkila. Good shirk is good. Brother, good shirk? Wallah, I'm not really, you know, I can't swallow this one. I'm sorry. Good shirk? These two are antonyms. Good innovation? The Prophet ﷺ said, every newly introduced matter is an innovation. Every innovation will lead you astray. And that which is astray is going to the fire. Then the people come after. He said, every, they say, but there's good innovation. Hajib. Hajib. Amazing, I don't understand. You know, I'm not a scholar. And, but there are some scholars who hold this position. Sometimes I wish I could go into their brain and see really, what were they thinking? When they said there's good innovation, what was going on in their mind? Were they sincere? Were they something else? I'm sure some may have been sincere and made an error. But this is a, a grave error. Kullu, kullu, kullu man alayha fan. Does that mean that some of the people on earth will, will, uh, will perish and others will remain? Or does it mean everyone will perish? It means everyone. Kullu nafsin da'iqatul maut. Every soul shall taste death. Does that mean that some people will die or everyone? Everyone. Kullu bid'atin dalala. Every innovation will lead astray. Does that mean that some or all? All? How can they say this good innovation? Allah musta'an. They say, we are encouraging the people to follow. That's a more amazing one. They want, they want to encourage the people to follow the Prophet ﷺ by innovating. That's like me telling you, okay, uh, we will be having a lecture about the prohibition of cheating. Okay? And then, in the lecture, I teach you how to cheat. So brother, what is this? See, if you want to cheat, you know, you get a ruler. You know, I'm not going to tell you. Some of the kids will like the idea. <laughs> but the point being, is it possible that I tell you, you know, shir, you know, cheating is haram. And then you see me cheating, I teach you cheating, you say, what is this? People come follow the sunnah, when? On an innovated festival. Ya akhi, if you begin by following the sunnah, then you will not even have the festival. Don't try to teach me how to follow when you yourself are not following. Amazing contradiction. They say, you know, uh, we want to encourage the people to read his bio. His biography, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Only on that day? Now, you know, on that day it clicked in your brain that you should read the biography that you teach the people the seerah on a day which, the only day which you're supposed to avoid it, in fact, is that day. We should read the seerah and be familiar with the Prophet's life every day of our lives to the best of our ability with our shortcomings. Not on a particular day. So these are the reputations. Okay. And that should be enough. If you have family members that celebrate this, advise them. There are many articles written, many books addressing this issue. You don't even need this lecture. This is for those who love to watch DVDs. But for, excuse me, for others, there's written material that we, would really clarify it. If someone insists afterwards, Allah al Allah al But never ever attend a mawlid, whether you are invited or whatever the situation may be, this is something that we do not engage in in any way, shape or form. Even if the people only came together and said, read some, some from the Rahik al-Maktoum, the sealed nectar, this is still an innovation. Because we're trying to gather on a day which the Prophet did not make it, uh, he did not prescribe it. Furthermore, and amazingly, there are seven different opinions about when the Prophet was born. The 12th of Rabi' al-Awwal, the 13th, the 17th, the 19th, and the 7th. And there isn't any narration which favors one over the other, except some ulama made that favoritism. But the principle is, we all agree that he died on the 12th of Rabi' al-Awwal, but there's no agreement he was born. So now people are really celebrating his death, not his mawlid, because we cannot say for sure that he was born on that day. Isn't that amazing? This is a sign for people who understand. 
This is a sign for people who celebrate the Mawlid that Allah decreed that his date of birth will not be confirmed authentically. But subhanallah. Tayyip. Shabbi Barat. Did I say it right? Yes. I don't speak Urdu or Farsi. I, I, I tried to find the origin of these words and the, you know, I got more confused. Maybe Farsi with some Hindi, some Urdu, some uh, Armenian. I don't know how many languages are involved. But whatever it is, it's the half of Sha'ban. The middle of Sha'ban. No authentic narration whatsoever. Not even one. Not even one authentic narration that alludes to the fact that you should be fasting the day of Sha'ban or Qiyam or doing Qiyam in the night of Sha'ban. Nothing. And every narration that is out there, including one where the Prophet ﷺ said to Ali, if you pray 100 rak'at and you recite in each rak'at Surah Al-Fatiha and Surah Al-Ikhlas 10 times, then Allah will meet all your needs. Can you imagine how long this will take? 100 rak'at in each rak'at for Fatiha and Ikhlas 10 times? Ya yes, Shaykh, you know Ramadan will come and you still celebrate the 15th of Sha'ban. <laughs> Brother, I haven't finished yet. Brother, go to sleep, man. What are you doing? We don't have... You want to celebrate this day? Anyone? I challenge you to bring an authentic narration. One authentic narration. If you're unable to do it, leave it alone. Very popular among some countries or more than others, it doesn't matter. We are all expected to follow the Quran and the Sunnah, not culture and country and traditions. No 15th of Sha'ban anymore. No Shabbi Barat. And I, 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 the brother told me Barat from Barat, which is innocence, it's the night of innocence or the night of, of being freed from Jahannam. Uh, if you continue to do it, it may backfire. Okay? I'm telling it to you clearly. If you insist on innovating on, in the deen of Allah, that, you know, you try to save yourself from Jahannam, it may backfire. This day may send you to Jahannam. So leave it alone. Five. Ruling on greetings. Now we said all oh, these are haram, 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 haram. Someone comes to you and says, Eid Sa'id, during your Eid, these were the non-Muslims who they're tricky, tricky. They come on Eid and they, and they, and they greet you with our Eid. Huh? Why? So when their time comes around, they can get something back from you. Huh? It's like one for one. I greet you, you better greet me back. This happened to me. Uh, so when they greeted me, I said, you know, whatever. It was their time, Christmas time. And obviously I said absolutely nothing. When they became frustrated with me, they, they began, they initiated the greeting, and I again said nothing in return. And of course that wasn't the greatest experience of my life. I'm not going to tell you what happened afterwards. It wasn't very good. But the bottom line is, that this was, uh, this was one of the tough situations. But, you know, how do we really deal? It's tough. If you have a neighbor, you know, he's nice to you, he's kind, you try to da- you give him da'wah to Islam, he sees you on Eid al-Adha, he says, you know, happy Eid. Then he, on Christmas, he says, Merry Christmas, and you're like, hmm. <laughs> you know, I want to say it, you know, so I can, you know, just to, just, I don't believe in it, but, you know, just to keep him close. But, you know, you really can't say it. Now, how do you explain this to someone? One of the du'as, may Allah reward him with goodness. One of the du'a gave the most amazing, amazing analogy in the world. It continues to amaze me till the moment and I will share it with you. How do you convince the Muslims that you should not say Merry Christmas or Happy New Year's or Happy Valentine's or Happy Mother's Day or any of these? And feel confident. Feel confident. Here's how he looked at it. He said, look man. Okay, how do I put this in the right words? I want to give, I want to make it, you know, I want to summarize. Okay. Imagine a Satan worshipper came to you on the day where it's Satan's day. And he said to you, Happy Satan's day. Okay? Eid Shaitan. Sa'id. Any Muslim, any Muslim who has a grain of Iman, can you say to him, Happy Satan's Day to you? <laughs> yes or no? Can you? We all agree? Can you find a way in your heart to say Happy Satan? A'udhu Billah You are afraid if you say this Allah will curse you on the, on the spot Maybe the earth will swallow you Can you, can you dare to say Allah's enemy The enemy of Islam The, en- the one who wants to take it to Jahannam you, you wish him a happy day? 
unbelievable. If you can say that, then look, here's what the, the da'ya said. He said, listen, Christmas, New Year's, Valentine's, ila akhirihi, are they from Allah? If they're not from Allah, who are they from? From shaitan. So it's the same thing. So now if they're from shaitan, the one who's benefiting, the one who's gaining on these days is shaitan because it's from his revelation to the people. He inspired them to innovate these, these celebrations, not Allah. If it is not from Allah, it's from the shaitan. So Christmas day is Satan's day. And Valentine's day is Satan's day. And Mother's day is Satan's day. Because on that day, people are doing something which Allah did not reveal. So they are all one and the same. Isn't that beautiful? I was convinced. I was like, whoa, that's as good as it gets. So now you don't have to worry anymore. If you are in this situation, use it for da'wah. Say my friend, a quick question. I as a Muslim have been taught to, you know, adhere to the divine revelation. You know, don't you agree that we should be in contact, you know, connect with our creator, that we should, you know, seek the higher, you know, the higher grounds, that which is good? So yeah, sure, sure. Now, I really, I mean, I feel very odd to say something which I, was not from the bottom of my heart. Don't you want it to be from the bottom of my heart? I don't know what this, what this celebration is. Can you give me a background on it? Guess what? You will not find a single Christian who will convince you. If you have some knowledge. He may tell you it's the day, 25th of December, you know, Jesus is born. Say, can you show me the references for that? I just want reference. One reference. On the spot, will you have a reference? No. Then you are excused. When he looks for the reference, he will find out that this is a fabrication. Then you have just given him da'wah and the da'wah will go home with him. You see? Backfire. So anytime they try to present you something, be genuine. Say, I'm sorry, I don't just wish people greetings without any meanings. You know, we have in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. This is very valuable. This is a greeting. Every greeting I say is valuable and from the bottom of my heart. I don't agree with that celebration because I don't think it's from God. So I cannot fake you and give you something that I don't feel. Sorry. This is, they will respect you for that. They, they will respect you far more than you pleasing them while knowing that you're not supposed to do so. You see what I'm saying? So we should find honor and dignity in our religion and we should not succumb to these nonsense or nonsensical you know, behaviors. Once you know it's haram, then stick to it and be firm. Never ever say Merry Christmas to anyone. It doesn't matter what the circumstances, even if you wind up working for a kafir. And he's your boss. And he tells you Merry Christmas, no Merry Christmas to him. Inshallah you get fired. Allah will give you a better job. Allah will give you a better job. You, Allah will not leave you alone if you do this for his sake. Don't be weak. Say, oh yeah, okay. No. Keep firm. Fight. We should not help them on these days. You can't be selling, if you have a, 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 you know, a, a stationery or something like that, and you know, they have the cards, on, on these valentines, on these holidays, you're not allowed to sell these cards. If you know that the non-Muslims will pick them up, and write their junk on them, and give them as gifts to each other. You cannot help them. Because Allah says, وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ And help and enjoy and, and help one another in piety and goodness, and do not help one another in sin and disobedience. And transgression. So we don't help them in any way. Even if someone tells you, can you give me a ride to this hall where there's a Christmas party? You cannot drop them off. Can you give me directions to that place? You cannot give them directions. Can you just give me the phone number so I can call them? You cannot give them the phone number. You cannot help them or get involved in any way, shape or form. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. I will conclude this lecture by saying, Allah says in the Quran, لا تجد قوما يؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر يوادون من حاد الله ورسوله ولو كانوا آباءهم أو أبناءهم أو إخوانهم أو عشيرتهم أولئك كتب في قلوبهم في قلوبهم الإيمان وأيدهم بروح من Allah says in the Quran, amazing ayah. You will not find you will not find a group of people who believe in Allah and the last day showing affection to those who oppose Allah and His Messenger 
Even if they were their fathers, their sons or children, their brothers or their tribe, their people. You will not find them showing love and affection to them even if they were that close. Why? Allah said, Allah has decreed or written belief in the hearts of the believers and He has supported them with the spirit created by Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you will not find someone who believes in Allah in the last day showing affection to these innovations, to these celebrations, to these festivals, even if it is your own parents. Because Allah had put Iman in your heart and this and that are incompatible. They are incompatible. They cannot come together in one heart. Your heart cannot accommodate anything but being on the side of Allah and His Messenger. If we truly believe. If we don't truly believe, we will show affection, we will, fo- we will show inclination and we may even in- get involved in their celebrations. And that's very dangerous. Umar radiallahu anhu used to say, avoid the enemies of Allah during their celebrations. Avoid the enemies of Allah during the festivals because the curse of Allah is being sent down upon them. It's being sent down upon them. And the, Mus- and the non-Muslims living under the Muslim land, Ahlul Dhimma, they were not allowed to celebrate their festivals in, in the open. They were not even allowed to celebrate the festivals in the open, let alone the Muslim celebrating it with them. This is how the Sahaba, they used to be. This is how they came, they used to be on the deen. So then my brothers in Islam, the Prophet ﷺ told us that he will be at the fount on the day of judgment. And that the Muslims will go and approach him wasallam, wherein he will provide them with some water that if they drink, they will never feel thirsty again. However, a group of the Muslims will come to him and they will be prevented by the angels from approaching the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. He will say, this is, these are my people, my ummah. They will say to him, you do not know, you do not know what they innovated into the religion after you. And he will say, suhqan, suhqan. May they be destroyed, may they be destroyed. Keep in mind that every one of these celebrations is an innovated celebration. And if we get involved in them, then we are getting involved in innovation. And there may, there may come a time where the Prophet ﷺ will say to one of us, Don't come near me. May Allah destroy you. Because you brought something into the religion which you didn't bring. He didn't celebrate any of these. He didn't let the Muslims celebrate anything but Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. This is sufficient for us. Yes or no? جزاكم الله خيرا وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد. Dubai festival. Oh no. Now here the ulama make a distinction. If there is a particular event that is not Eid, it doesn't happen annually. It's something that is happen, happening randomly. Then some of the ulama say it depends. We have to further investigate. Not that they allow it. But they say we have to further investigate. Is it made by the non-Muslims? Is it, does it fall under imitating the non-Muslims? If so, then we leave it alone as well. I cannot give you a fatwa, not qualified to give a fatwa on that issue. I'm giving you the foundation. If it is not something that they do annually, then there's room. But even if there's room, we have to look into this celebration. Does it have any pagan origin? Does it have any Christian or Jewish or other, you know, non-Muslim origin? If so, then still we have to avoid it. People come from all over the world and then they do the business of selling and buying and all. That is a shopping festival actually. They call it Dubai shopping festival. Well, I mean, you'll be shocked. You know, the Olympics, the Olympics actually is, a, is an ancient Greek, uh, you, know, uh, you know, sport related to religion picked up by the Romans and if you, if you study the history of the Olympics you'll find that a Muslim is not allowed to get involved in any Olympics. Yeah, like that marathon running, you know, yeah, it's a marathon, the person who was really the, the origin of it is, is something related to their religion, <laughs> then of course it was you know, adopted by, by other people who were athletes and then they made it what it is today, but if you go back to the origin, the Olympics is something totally different. So, so when you go back to the origin of something and it is a pagan origin or a non-Muslim origin, you must leave it alone. It doesn't matter what it is like today. So I don't know about the shopping festivals. I don't know whether you know where they came from, but Allahu Alam. National Day. Same thing. 
All this, all nothing, nothing. And if you're a boss, you don't give anyone a holiday. Go to work and bring the employees to work. Now. The national anthem, why they think we have to, when we are in our we sing? We have to stand and respect that. Should we sing or should we respect? For all that, we are in another country. You know? no. 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 Of other countries? Most of them are shirk based. I mean, I'll speak of my country. Our, our national anthem is wicked. You know, it's Audu Billah, it's kufr from the beginning till the end. That, you know, our life is for the watan, for the land, for the tree, for, for everything but Allah. And Allah says, Qul inna salati wa nusuki wa mahiyaya wa mati lillahi rabbil alameen. Not for the tree or for the plants or for anything else. So, you know, these national anthems also khali walli. But we don't sing, we... Don't sing, don't do anything, ya Sheikh. Check your nails. <laughs> Everything looks good. I don't need to cut them, alhamdulillah. Get a pocket PC and get busy with it. You know, do something beneficial. Let the people sing on their own. Hey, what? What's the ruling about saying uh, That's fine. Good morning, good evening. Uh, how are you? Hello, whatever. All these different... After the salam among the Muslims. Among the non-Muslims, there is no harm in initiating that because it is not the greeting intended by the Prophet ﷺ, which is the salam. We don't initiate the salam with the kuffar. But if you say good morning as means, not of respecting them either, as means of trying to be kind and showing them the Islamic behavior and bring them to Islam, that should be the intention all the time. But good morning, good evening and all that is fine. It's fine. There was a young man, yes brother? Can we make birthday cards for Muslims? Can you make what? Birthday cards. Bodyguards? Wedding cards? Birthday cards. Oh no, no, no. Same thing, Habibi. Sorry, Malik. Same thing as I said. Well, actually, whether it is bodyguards or birthday cards or wedding cards, all of it is no good. Don't make anything for them because you are helping them. I'll give you an example. Okay? Uh, the teacher tells you that you shouldn't, you know, uh, you shouldn't cheat in class. Okay, and then you go, you don't cheat, but you give your friend the material from which he will cheat. Is that okay? Because you're helping him do the sin. So when we give them bir- the birthday gifts or the birthday cards, we're helping them disobey Allah. Ibn al-Qayyim was so serious. He said, actually Abu Hafs al-Hanafi, he said, if you give a kafir an egg, you know, why, and with the intention of honoring him, you have disbelieved in Allah. If your intention is to honor him by giving him an egg on Easter, you have disbelieved in Allah. So the, and, and Ibn al-Qayyim said, when you, when you actually greet someone with Merry Christmas, it's as if you're saying Congratulate, congratulations for prostrating to the cross. Because you are acknowledging their kufr and you are agreeing with it. So, no birthday uh, cards, Habibi. <coughs> Just a sharing, uh, among Filipinos there are Christmas of course. Sometimes you put an aware with the Christmas and Christmas. So how do you answer it? Just uh, how to answer it? If you say in the morning, uh, good morning. Yeah. So why? Because we're into Christmas in Islam. Then start to explain. Okay, okay, there you go. He says Merry Christmas, say good morning. Merry Christmas. Uh, did you make some coffee this morning? Change the subject, right? Is that what you mean? You know, Merry Christmas, my leg hurts. <laughs> Some of them, you know, they get lost. They're like, oh yeah, what happened to you? Like, well, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay, shit, You got out. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, how should we, what should we cope with Muslims who practice these things? How do we explain it to them? I mean, what is our... Uh, Buy the DVD and give it to them. <laughs> They're Muslims. I know, but you know, like I said, you mentioned, you know, t- tell him once Allah completed the religion, He perfected the religion, Prophet Sallam told us everything that will get us closer to Allah, and all of these were not involved, meaning they're no good. I mean, that's the most basic understanding, and of course you can elaborate, yes. Are weddings considered celebrations? Weddings, are considered celebrations? Uh, well, I mean, the Muslim weddings, yeah. and even, no, they're not, because they're not annual. It's a one-time thing. And it was done by the Prophet ﷺ. So now here, when we have something that the Prophet ﷺ did, we all remain quiet. Otherwise, someone will say, Eid al-Fitr is an innovation. See what? You know, what? no Eid in Islam. No, we have, we have two festivals that are annual. Wedding, you know, unless somebody gets married every year, is a one-time thing. 
Yes. Tfadal. Wa alaykum salam, Captain Shuaib. Alhamdulillah. Could the Ha'am went to Mithir? Most of the people do say that like uh, after the Eid or at the beginning of even the Islamic year. So what should we say? Well, I mean, some of the ulama allowed it, and I cannot give you a fatwa which contradicts that of the ulama because I'm not qualified. Uh, so you follow, you follow an imam which you trust, a fatwa which you trust of a alim, and then you act accordingly. But Imam Ahmad, rahimahullah, used to dislike that. At least he used to dislike initiation. And he said, if someone does it to me, then I give him back just because I was commanded to return the tahiyya with something equal or better. But he wouldn't initiate it, and that is the most... Yani, the most comfortable opinion that, that, that I'm inclined towards Just leave it alone Just we don't need it Anything else? If non-Muslim wishes to the Salaam Alaikum What do you do? The scholars have different Some of them say During all circumstances you say Wa alaykum That's it And on you And you don't say Wa alaykum as salam some of the ulama said, it depends. The reason why this was first done by the Prophet ﷺ, because the Jews used to say to him, As-Samu alaykum, may poison be upon you. So he would say, wa alaykum and on you. And he wouldn't say the salam. So some of the ulama said, if you are sure that the non-Muslim said, As-Salamu, and he wasn't playing with the words, then you return with wa alaykum as salam. And others said, uh, that at all times you say wa alaykum. To be on the safe side, you say wa alaykum. <coughs> And 99.99% don't know the ruling. They hear you say wa alaikum, they think this is one of the valid responses, and you're done. You've done your job. But don't it's, avoid wa alaikum as salam. Just because, you know, it's uh, questionable. Fine. As salamu alaikum. Uh, tayyib, uh, Chinese have a time when uh, it's the monkey new year. I told you, see? <laughs> I didn't know this. Uh, and other animals, astaghfirullah. Sah. Anyway, but if you can please uh, let the people know while, uh, mashallah, they might have, they may, uh, they may, no, hold on, they might have changed the musical ringtone and some have accepted it with, uh, replaced it with Quran. Uh, please do not go to washroom uh, while the cell phone is on. I have heard Quran on the cell phone while in the wash, washroom, subhanallah, astaghfirullah. Jazakillah wa khayran awalan. Uh, so concerning the monkey's new year There you go uh, Concerning the, the We said before Even in the fatwa Or in the fatwa In the lecture about About the music We mentioned that Dua Zikr uh, uh, And Quran Are not A suitable substitute For the Musical ringtones Because these are Acts of worship With which we worship Allah And we don't worship Allah By putting some ibadah On our ringtone On our phone As an alarm even the adhan, all these are not allowed. Uh, whether you go to the bathroom, if you go with it to the bathroom, that's, a, that's double trouble and a calamity. That the speech of Allah has been recited in the washroom. But even without that, and I gave you the example that while someone calls you, and maybe an urgent call, while the ayah is being played, you may cut off the speech of Allah to answer someone by saying hello, and you may speak about sin. You may speak about disobeying Allah. You may back by someone. So the deen of Allah is, is higher and more venerated in our sight than for us to turn it into a bunch of ringtones. Strictly avoid it. Inshallah. Yes sir. I'm going to stop with you on now. Uh, we can download the Quran to the cell phone. Is it allowed to go to the toilet for those uh, cell phones? Yes sir. As long as you don't have the application running. Okay, because see, like right now, I have the Qur'an in here. However, how is it? It's a bunch of symbols that the, the, the machine reads and turns them to, into an image. It is not the words written, it is not the actual Qur'an there. And once it's off, you know, you don't see anything. But if you turn it on and it had the sabha, the page of the Qur'an, you went to the washroom, that's no good. But if it is in this fashion, turned off, or you have some other, you know, desktop, uh, uh, but you don't have the actual application, the, and there's a fatwa from the ulama. This is not my fatwa. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that, inshallah. Anyone else? Okay. Inshallah ta'ala, the 24th of May, a special lecture. 
very special lecture has been on my mind and heart and soul and limbs for over a year now. It's called, do not forward. You'll guess. I'm sure you'll figure it out. Do not forward. There will be a presentation, inshallah, because I want to show you some stuff. So, at 24th of May, everyone is welcome to join and attend. Please pray Isha at the nearby masjid and come early. وَآخِرِ دَعَوَا الْحَمْدِ اللَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وَصَلَى اللَّهُ وَسَلَمْ عَلَى مُحَمَّدٍ سُبْحَانَكَ اللَّهُمَ بِحَمْدِكَ شَدُوا اللَّهِ إِلَهِ إِلَّا أَنْتَ أَسْتَغْفِرُكَ وَأَتُوبُ